Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on UFT. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and you are watching the UFT tutorial series. In today's discussion, we have a new topic to consider in the tutorial that is data table. So generally data table is a source of information or data which can be passed or it can be used to extract and store the values. So in previous tutorial, you would have already seen that how data table can be used in terms of output value to extract it from the application during the runtime and uh, store it in the data table. Sometime it is also used to fetch the data as one of the source to the script. So say for example, when you talk about data-driven testing, your data can be secured here and stored in terms of repository in different columns and different rows. And then you can pass the same data to the script on the application using this data table. So let's explore it today and understand uh, what exactly the data table is and what it does include more about understanding on the same. So before we get into the test, let me just give you an overview idea of that. Uh, data table generally includes the two type of sheets under that. It's just like your Excel of sheets where you can have multiple sheets as well. And each sheet will contain multiple columns and multiple rows where there's, there are certain formulas which can similarly work just like Excel here as well, which are ordinary like you do the arithmetic operators or you want to do equations, text formula, anything. <clears throat> what you work as Excel, you can work here as well. But there are certain formulas which will be having a limitations to be used in UFT data table. So till then, you know, by the time you reach there, it will be too high ad advanced level to understand till there. So uh, as of now, I can say that all your Excel formulas would work exactly here in data table as well. So it basically consists of two different uh, sheets, global and local. Global uh, sheet can be used by multiple actions. So generally we can create up to 255 actions in UFT. Uh, that is like each action, what do you see where you record the script. So we will be having more detailed understanding on action in different tutorials. So generally we can create up to 255 actions within the uh, a test and each action by default creates a local action sheet and that's how you classify the data table into two different sheets that is global and local so the global action sheet or global sheet of the data table would be uh, generally uh, carrying uh, you know permissions to all the actions so all different actions can generally access the data from the global uh, sheet and uh, following that we can look at the local action sheet which will be restricted to a particular action only so before i get into more details of that let me just quickly take up take you up to the another one uh, test and uh, help you with understanding where you can find the data tab and now so so here we are getting started with a new test. Uh, we have a new test taken up here and we are into one particular action. And at the moment you have an action here, you can see at the bottom there's a action one sheet also created and that is what you call it as a local action sheet. Whereas on left of it, you have a global action sheet. In case you do not have the data tab at the bottom, you can always go to the view menu and just click on the data tab here. So when you press that, it makes it visible at the bottom pane, and you can have a look at the data tab there. So generally, if you talk about data tab, I was just talking about the same thing, that it comes with by default with a global action sheet and a local action sheet. Local action sheet will be created for as many test, uh, actions you create. So say, for example, if I create a new action quickly here, and you can see there's a new action sheet will be added. So say action two, if you want, you can rename it and say OK. So as you see, I've got action two. I also got a local action two sheets. Now, obviously, the main difference between these two sheets are global can be accessed by any action. So for example, the script which includes uh, the parameter which is in action two, for example, the parameter name is var one, which is in action two. And if the parameter is mentioned or defined in global action sheet, then it can be accessed by that particular action. Oh, I'm just sorry about that. Let me just put it as VAR, okay. VAR1. So, okay, uh, still the caps, you know, sometime. All right. 
So what I'm talking about is, say for example, this var parameter is now in global action sheet, but the var parameter which is declared in the script is in action two, then of course it can access the data from global. So global is accessible to any action within your test, whereas the local action sheets respectively are accessible only to those action for which it is created. So for, say for example, if var one and the data is supposed to be in a local action sheet, then it has to be in action one or global, either local action sheet or the global action sheet. Now, why do we have local action sheets when global can really access or it can be accessible by any number of actions? The reason is, for example, if you want to uh, run the test, then all the data will be called by default from the global test or global test data sheet. So generally, there's a lot of uh, you know performance degradation in the terms of automation execution which happens. So generally, you do not put all your parameters in global action sheet. In future, we're looking at different tutorials, you'll also understand that uh, we cannot hamper all the information in the global action sheet sometime. So what we do is we restrict the parameters respectively to each action. For example, if action one has certain parameters, we restrict it to action one itself. And action two has certain parameters, we put the test data supporting that in action two, local sheet itself. The reason is now it will not be having any kind of conflict when it switches between actions within the test. So if a parameter is used in action one, then it will only have access to a local action sheet or global sheet. Now global sheet doesn't have the seed, uh, data, then of course it will go back to the local action sheet. So sometimes we try to improvise the execution rate, the execution time by having such small things to be dealt with. But generally, if speaking very simple, you can have data in any of the sheet for example, for a particular action one, you can have it in either global or local action sheet, but not in action two. So generally you write your script in actions, so you have to be a little careful with that. Or also when it comes to the parameterization or iterations of multiple set of value, you can also create a crisscross parameter. For example, if I want to run certain value, for example, A, B, and C, with another combination of, say for example, D, E, and F. Now this creates a permutation when you do such information or the test data arrangement. For example, now the execution will follow A with D, A with E, A with F. Then the next iteration will go with B with D, B with E, B with F, C with D, C with E, C with F. So all together we'll be having nine iterations to be executed if you create such combinations of the test data. Where you have the data in global as well as local action sheet, then the global becomes your parent data and the local action sheet becomes your child data and the parent will be uh, you know, combined with the child data to execute multiple combinations of the test data. So if you would like to have such runtime things where you want to keep the parent one and want to try with all the child, for example, keeping the parent username as same and trying with three different passwords or trying with one fly from city and going with multiple fly to city, then you can try with these combinations as well. So this is one of the property of the data table where you can uh, use this option as a part of your test. Beyond that, of course, uh, for each action when you create, you will be having accessible, you can import data from external source like Excel, but that we will see in upcoming tutorials. And uh, right now from the data table understanding, this is what we have got. So in case you have any queries beyond this, you are free to wait for certain tutorials and uh, get updated with more understanding on the same. In case uh, you get stuck with anything, you are free to comment it below. I'll be there to assist you. More than that, please uh, follow the channel to get latest updates on the new uh, series, new topics on the UFT. Other than that, if you have uh, any, any, any clarifications, stay tuned for the video tutorials because we will be having a lot of linking content about this in the upcoming tutorials. So stay tuned for that. Keep learning, keep practicing, keep exploring about UFT. Till then, take care team. Happy learning.